Hello everyone, and welcome to lesson 4 of Xcode Tips. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering a lot to do with, or going to be covering a lot, with the editor section right here. So, basically the code folding ribbon on the side and the navigation bar on the top. So there's tons of stuff to cover in this tutorial. So let's get started. So what do I want to do here first? Well, let's go and start with the code folding ribbon. We're going to work left to right. So the cold, how do we say cold? The code folding ribbon is uh, basically it allows you to fold your code. And let's just make sure we have something done here first. So if you go up to Xcode preferences, which is right here, Xcode preferences, text settings section, display options, make sure you have these two things checked, which are the show code folding ribbon and the code focus. Make sure those two are checked or else this will not work. So uh, once you know those are checked, all this should make sense. So um, let's go ahead and test this out. So when I hover over this, as you can see, it basically detects where um, my curly braces match up. So I have one here, one here, so therefore it's matching those up. If I had an if statement in here, it would also uh, do that. I'm not going to bother showing that, but as you can see, it matches those braces up as well. So if I want to, if I want to, uh, what's known as fold the code or collapse the code, whatever you want to call it, I can simply click on this code folding ribbon, and it will fold the code. And basically, it makes the um, three uh, periods. I, don't, I can't remember what that's called. There is a special name for it, but basically, it just means that your code is continued. So if I click this again, as you can see, it will unfold all the stuff that's inside my folded code. And um, it will work if I was to run this, and if I was to run this, it would work the same way. Um, it doesn't matter. Basically all it's doing is hiding the code from the user. So uh, let's go back to my if statement here for a section for a second. And if I have this if statement, I can even collapse this as well. So it just collapses the thing that um, it's basically showing. So that's code folding, and it's kind of a fun thing to do. And basically, if you have a lot of methods with a lot of code and you just want to hide a lot of that stuff, then you can simplify your code by just basically folding them or hiding a lot of the code that pertains to them. So it's a cool thing to do. And uh, yeah, that's code folding. So the next part is the back, go back and go forward arrows. And this just basically means that your cursor goes back to the previous position. So you just notice that I move my cursor. So if I hit the back button, it will go back to, apparently I had that selected, whatever. So if I hit the back arrow key, I don't know, it's just bouncing wherever the heck it feels like right now. But um, basically it just moves the cursor back to where it was previously. So if I have my... Um, if I go over here to my uh, code section and I go to another file, and if I hit the back arrow key, it will jump back to the previous file since my cursor was previously in this file. So that's pretty much how that works, simple enough. So now uh, let's try something else since we I think we understand how the go forward and go back arrows work. Let's go to the history bar section, which basically just holds every file that you've touched basically since you've opened Xcode or I don't know if that's true basically every file you've been in since you cleared the history I guess I should say so let's go ahead and I'll just clear the history so now you can see that I don't have any files selected anymore but if I go to a different file like my animal.h now it adds that to my history and if I go to my dog.h and dog.m it adds both of those to the history you get the idea. It's like Safari history, any browser history that you use, just basically keeps the history of where you've been. So if you want to max out this history at 10 or something, uh, you have that option right here in the history capacity. So anyway, that's basically history in Xcode. So now let's go over to, where do I want to go? I want to go to my dog header file here. And as you can see, I have this little other section here. I don't actually know what this is called. But basically what it does is this. It will separate your code for its different components. So uh, if you guys uh, know, if you have 
guys have looked at the uh, Objective C tutorials, then you know all about this, and you'll uh, you know what an at interface is. It's basically what I want to say. So um, the at interface portion is just part of a class, and as you can see, it represents that with this little C right here. And in your classes, you declare different methods, which are basically functions. Uh, they're not the same thing, but uh, if you've only watched the C tutorials, you can relate to functions. So um, my methods here are uh, just, I have three different methods in my class. And um, my there's my method, and it's just showing, it's basically just an outline of what is in my class. So... Uh, if I select one of these, it'll highlight whatever I selected, and it's a simple enough concept. So let's go into my .m file, and let's say I want to see um, just different things that are in this file. Well, if I hit the run after bone, it will jump to that thing in my code. So that can be kind of nice for when you have a lot of code and you want to jump to something fast. There's another secret, super secret, hidden thing in this file, which is known as the progma mark, which works like this. If I make a dash, like so, progma mark dash, then it will make this division line in my uh, code overview section. So it creates this nice division line, and that could be handy if you want to separate some methods from each other. Another thing that you can do, uh, so let's just jump down here. And I'll make another progma mark, and I'll make a division line. And the second thing you can do is actually enter text. So if I want to call this these the bone methods, since these have chew bone and run after bone, then if I go back into my code organizer thing here, you can see that I have a division line, since I made one right there, and I also have this little heading called bone methods. And it just kind of, it's a nice way of outlining just different things that you have in your class. So that's pretty much that section. The next section is the bookmarks button, which basically bookmarks something that you want to bookmark. It's kind of like Safari bookmarks, basically just, or more, maybe more specifically, like a page bookmark, where it will bookmark a certain section in code. So if I want to add a bookmark, I can go up to edit and hit add to bookmarks, uh, which is weird, but anyway, add to bookmarks. Uh, if I want to do that, I can just hit Command D, which is the tagline for it, or sorry, the keyboard shortcut. So if I hit Command D, it will uh, give me this little pop-up window saying add a new bookmark, and I'll call this, uh, since I left it at the chew bone method, I'll just call it chew bone method, and I'll hit OK. And now in the groups and files section over here, uh, we have a little thing called bookmarks, and if I hit that, oops, I didn't have to double click it, but if I hit that once, it will jump to this, and as you can see, my location is dog.m, and it basically jumps to the chew bone method. If I go to another class, and I hit this method, or my bookmark here, it still will jump to that method. So it's a nice way, and... Also, back to the button, uh, if I hit the button now, you can see that it has the chew bone method, and it'll jump to that in my code. If I'm in a different uh, thing, however, it will not show. It will still be grayed out. That's because the bookmark button only analyzes bookmarks for the file that you're in. So anyway, that's pretty much what the bookmark button does. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete this bookmark, and let's move on. So let's go to a different file, and it doesn't really matter what file I go to, but uh, let's say I want to create a breakpoint, and I haven't covered breakpoints as of yet, but a breakpoint basically stops your code for an instance in time, and you can analyze what it's done so far. So let's say I want to put a breakpoint right here. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to double-click that, I just want to click, click it once. And as you can see, it create a, created a breakpoint right here. And uh, now, if I go over here, it'll show the breakpoint is on line 4. If I put another breakpoint here, then I have another breakpoint in my breakpoint section. So that's basically what a breakpoint does, and I haven't actually covered what a breakpoint actually does. But for now, you can just uh, understand that that's where, that's what the button's for, is analyzing your breakpoints, or where they are in your code. But uh, basically, a breakpoint just stops your code before 
moving on. So uh, we'll get into breakpoints later, but they're not too important for right now. So yeah, that's basically the, just the break marks button section. And if you know how break break mark break points work in Objective C, uh, or not Objective in Xcode, then uh, you'll be all set. So the next part is the C, which basically stands for classes, and more specifically stands for class hierarchy. And that just basically means what inherits what, and what's a superclass or subclass of what. And you might not really know what a superclass and subclass are, but if you've been watching the Objective-C tutorials, you might have a little bit of an idea. So, in the Objective-C tutorials, I've been saying that an animal inherits uh, methods from NS object, and basically that means that NS object is a superclass of animal, and animal would be a subclass of NS object. If I also, I can do a different, I can create more than one file relating to inheritance. So if I create this dog uh, file, as you can see, I can inherit from my animal class as well, and this will allow me to inherit. Um, all the methods from animal and it will allow me to inherit from NS object as well since it uh, it links everything together so since animal inherited from NS object dog also inherits from NS object but it also inherits from animal as well so it's like a chain reaction so anyway that's basically how that works and if I want to know what's sub subclass and superclass of this superclass is basically the one that's higher up in the hierarchy so NS object would be the superclass of everything, basically. Um, the animal would be a subclass of an NS object, and the dog would be a subclass of an animal. So if I go to animal, and I hit the class button over here, as you can see, if I zoom in a little bit to that, and not so far in, but here you can see that I have NS object as a superclass, and a subclass of animal is the dog. So those basically just show class hierarchies in uh, your code. Another option is this uh, go to counterpart uh, button, which basically means that, uh, again, if you've been watching the Objective-C tutorials, this most of the stuff is for Objective-C stuff. So I apologize if you're watching this and you haven't watched the Objective-C stuff, but um, this will find um, the go to counterpart basically finds the at inter interface and at implementation of a class and switches in between them. So, for example, for every class you create, you have an, a header file and an .m file, which is your uh, interface and implementation. So, if I want to switch between those, I can hit the go to go to counterpart button as many times as I want, and it will switch between those two. So that's a nice thing I guess and you can also hit control option and up or sorry it's not control option command option and up and that will switch between the files as well so it does the same thing the next button is the lock button so if I let's say I wanted to create uh, something but let's say I lock this file and as soon as I start typing something it's gonna give me this thing saying hey this file is read-only basically you lock the file so um, yeah, I'm not going to let you type. So if you hit allow editing, it will allow you to edit for this period of time, but it will keep the file locked. If I want to unlock the file, I just hit the unlock key once again. So that's basically what a lock does. Simple, simple concept. So now there's another thing, which is the split editor view button, I guess. Basically, it just splits your editor. So it's kind of cool, and you can have a bunch of editing windows, although it can get extremely annoying and obviously you can see how this does get annoying and I can even split this uh, vertically if I want or horizontally I don't know what the heck you can split it the other way so if I hit that or I hold down the option key and hit the split button as you can see as you can see it splits it uh, the other way so and as you can see this really gets annoying so if you hit this uh, little and I'll zoom into this button this basically big window button here if I hit that it will re um, add, I don't know what the heck you consider that, re unsplit the button uh, or unsplit the editor. So now it basically adds everything back together. So that's pretty much everything for the editing window and the navigation bar and the code folding section. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, please like the tutorial 
or like the video, whatever. Leave a comment if you want to, I don't really care, but it would be cool. And if you enjoy the tutorials and uh, like my other tutorials as well, please subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll see you next tutorial, because there will be tons more tutorials to come. Alright, see you then.